So now it's time for this week's feature interview. Recently, the London-based think tank, the Centre for Social Cohesion, published a report on how Muslim students view issues such as killing in the name of religion, establishing a worldwide caliphate, introducing Sharia law to the UK, setting up an Islamic political party in the UK, gender equality, the treatment of apostates and homosexuals, and the compatibility of Islam with secularism and democracy. Islam on Campus is the most comprehensive survey ever undertaken of Muslim student opinion in the UK, based on a specially commissioned YouGov poll of 1,400 students, fieldwork and interviews. The results show that while the majority of Muslim students don't endorse extremism, a very substantial minority do. Shah Network News' senior political sociologist Tom Payne asked the Centre for Social Cohesion's director, Douglas Murray, to explain why they asked the questions that they did. The interesting thing about it is that there have been a number of polls in recent years polling uh, Muslim um, opinion in Britain. But this is the first one that's polled, uh, the Centre for Social Cohesion did this in uh, conjunction with uh, the YouGov polling company. This is the first poll to poll Muslim student opinion in the UK. And there are several reasons why it's important, I think. And one of them is that people often say what they think Muslims believe or what Muslims uh, you know, do or from every imaginable angle. But actually, it's, it's one of the most important things is asking Muslims what they think about issues. And the second thing is that, of course, um, Muslim students are likely to be the most uh, prominent uh, representatives and even perhaps, sadly, we still use the term leaders of their communities. Um, so, so it's important to know what you know, potential future leaders of, uh, of Muslim community and spokespeople for them, perhaps, are thinking. And it's also necessary because um, in Britain, um, and a lot of work has been done on this in the past, but in Britain, uh, uh, Muslim uh, um, terrorists, Islamist terrorists, are far more likely to become terrorists if they've been to a university than not, which sort of always puts paid to the uh, poverty uh, uh, angle that people say drives terrorism. But uh, you're far more likely to become a, a terrorist in Britain if you've been to university. Um, so, I mean, Omar Sheikh, the murderer of Daniel Pearl, uh, of course, le attended the London School of Economics. Um, Asif Hanif and Omar Khan Sharif went to King's College London before going to Mike's place in Tel Aviv and blowing that up. So, we clearly have a problem with universities. At the same time, we know that uh, you know, future representatives of the Muslim community are going to be uh, uh, against those universities. So, it's very important to know what they're thinking on a whole range of issues. And that's what we tried to do. And um, by asking questions and in follow-on questions, hopefully we've, uh, we've uh, shown the, the, the most comprehensive uh, poll of its kind, showing what, what Muslim students in Britain are actually thinking. Well, you've done the unthinkable and actually asked Muslims what they think rather than have um, journalists and politicians imagine what they think. What do they think? Well, some of the findings um, you won't be surprised to hear are um, disturbing. They're very disturbing. Um, others show some cause for optimism. I mean, I would say that one of the things that the report showed is that the, 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 bad, the worst days of all of the 90s, where people like Omar Bakri, uh, were, where he was boasting that he was getting around 60 or so universities a week. I'm not sure if that's true, but um, people who were like him were very active on campus and allowed to be. Those, those days seem to be, uh, seem to be uh, in the past. However, um, the, the picture is still very far from rosy and may be getting worse in some regards, although it's very hard to tell. But, I mean, figures like, for instance, 40% of Muslim students polled uh, supported the introduction of elements of Sharia into British law. Um, previous polls have shown around this same figure. It tends to be around 40% of Muslims in Britain who support elements of Sharia law. It's important to stress that doesn't necessarily or by a long shot mean uh, that they support, you know, the, the, the cutting of hands and so on. But, uh, but, but that the, the elements of the law of Britain should, should accommodate Sharia, it tends to be around 40%. One of the disturbing things about this, of course, is this is the most educated, um, uh, um, you know, uh, group of people 
you could poll about this issue. And it seemed to me to be disturbing that that, that figure um, crops up there. Well, how disturbed can you be about this when you've got people like Lord Phillips and the Archbishop of Canterbury saying pretty much the same thing about Sharia law? Well, yes. I mean, that, that's a very important point, exactly, that, uh, that uh, you know, where does it leave uh, progressive um, uh, Muslims who, uh, who resist Sharia when the Archbishop of Canterbury seems to be for it? But, but I mean, the, the, perhaps most disturbing of the, uh, of the findings, uh, I thought, were that almost a third, uh, that's 32% of Muslim students polled, said that killing in the name of their religion uh, were, could be justified. Uh, and only 2% of non-Muslims polled uh, felt the same way. 2% of non-Muslims polled felt the same way. And uh, we, uh, we really did allow a, a considerable breakdown on that one of whether killing in the name of your religion, then in the, whether it was permissible in the defense of your religion or in propagation of your religion. And we've gone through all of those angles. But it, it, we tried to do the same thing uh, with um, one of the other key uh, issues, which is the perhaps uh, along with uh, women's rights, is perhaps one of the, the most important uh, you know, fissure issues in this area, which is the issue of what happens, uh, what should deem to be happened to apostates people who leave Islam. And on this, uh, we found that 6% of, new, of Muslim students polled said that converts from Islam should be punished, quote, in accordance with Sharia law. Well, that means death, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. And uh, we even uh, did that. There are higher figures for that from members of the Islamic societies. And I would urge uh, your listeners to, to go to the report to, to see the breakdown of that, because... Um, Inevitably, people say, ah, well, the question is biased or, uh, or, or, or so on. And actually, we, we in, this, uh, in this poll with YouGov have done everything we could to make sure that, uh, uh, that people have an opportunity to be aware of what they're saying. I mean, for instance, we don't just say, do you think that uh, people should be punished according to Sharia law if they leave Islam? We do a follow-on question, which is, is your understanding of that, that Sharia law is death? And you still get a percentage who say, oh, yes. Uh, so actually, we allow um, significant fall off in, uh, in, in, from people who are saying yes, but are ignorant of what they're saying yes to, or maybe. Well, there's a fairly substantial minority of Muslim students, obviously, that have very disturbing views, but there is a majority who don't. Are you encouraged by at, at least that fact? Yes. I mean, it, it's, always, it's, it's always a sort of um, a, a tricky one, this, isn't it? I mean, you know, as it were, if, if you do a poll, as, as has been done in the past, and you, you know, show that only 1% of... Um, Say of uh, of, um, of Muslims in Britain might be interested in terrorism related activities, or, or you know, th th there's always that th that problem of you know, you say, well, great, 99% aren't, and, and that, that is of course terrific, but even 1% is deeply problematic, and that's the same the same case here. I mean, there are some uh, I suppose uh, p positive uh, findings, I would say, and some some findings which, uh, you know, there's room in to sort of see how a future uh, progressive uh, generation of Muslim students could emerge. Um, I mean, while there are figures like, you know, a quarter of, um, of Muslim students, or 24%, uh, uh, feel that men and women are equal in the eyes of Allah, um, you know, uh, three quarters of you do. And, um, uh, you know, that, that, that's actually higher than some people, uh, both Muslims and non-Muslims, might have expected. Um, but th these key issues, you know, are really important to come back to again and again because they are, as I said earlier, the fissure issues, the the real um, uh, the, the 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 cracks uh, which have to be uh, have to be gone down and again and again. Which is the, the specific things about uh, what what we know to be uh, not just Western values but universal values of the right to freedom of belief, the freedom of expression, freedom of conscience, uh, and no issue really is more important than that, than the right to choose your religion, to leave your religion, uh, to leave a religion you may not have joined, but because your, fa your parents were members of that religion, you decide to, you know, you're, you're immediately made part of. And presumably, this, we're looking here at a snapshot of the next generation of leaders of the Muslim community in Britain, which is a very significant part of the population. What's Britain going to look like when the people who answered your questionnaire, who are now students, our leaders in the community. What's Britain going to look like with attitudes like this entrenched in power?
Yes, no, quite. I mean, it's 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 very interesting that um, that 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 among other things, I think I think political awareness is probably higher. Is in, it's sort of inevitable in some ways. It's going to be higher among students, but it's it, it's higher in a in a direction. I, I I think is 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 should be of interest to people. I mean, it it should be uh, of interest to the political parties that 54% uh, of the Muslim students that we polled were supportive of an Islamic political party being formed to represent the views of Muslims in Parliament. Of course, you know, there's a, there's a serious failing clearly there in the main political parties as well that, uh, that, you know, a majority of Muslim students would think you had to have a Muslim party to represent students. I don't expect that everyone um, in a political party I vote for is going to reflect all of my views, or even most of them. But uh, I don't expect there to be a, um, a party uh, representing, uh, solely representing Douglas Murray and his friends. Well, I, I imagine that um, because of the way the political, academia, media elite in Britain operate and think this sort of information that you're coming out with about what Muslim students actually think uh, has not been made particularly welcome. I, I imagine there's been a certain amount of sticking of fingers and ears and people going, la, 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 I can't hear you. Uh, a little bit. There was the inevitable uh, Liberal Democrat MP who decided that the problem was uh, a polling company and a think tank releasing information. Well, who ever heard of a polling company, a think tank, actually going out and asking people what they think? I mean, who do you think you are? I know, isn't this shocking? I mean, um, <laughs> it's um, you know, there, there's always that kind of... If, if you don't look at the problem, or if you don't ask questions, if you don't um, ask people what they think, then, then we'll all be fine. Um, and sadly, I mean, that's, um, you know, it's, it's that old, um, the old adage of Churchill's, you know, telling the difference between the firefighter and the fire. Uh, we're not even firefighting in this report. We're simply asking, uh, asking people what they think and uh, reporting, you know, verified and probable facts uh, about that. So, um, but, you know, you, you, you just get used in this area, sadly, to the fact that there are uh, people from all uh, walks of the political, religious, and social life who, uh, who will criticize anyone um, who, who raises questions like these. And I suppose there's something inevitable about that because they are very uncomfortable questions. They're questions uh, about uh, the future of Britain. They're questions about the future of Islam and the future of Islam in Britain and of what, the, what we sadly still have to call the Muslim community rather than just accepting, you know, talking about them as, as fellow citizens, but what people call the Muslim community. These are, these are very important questions, and they pose um, a, a, a challenge when they're extreme views. They pose a challenge not just to Muslims in Britain, but to non-Muslims in Britain as well, who, um, you know, who we've also polled. We also polled non-Muslim students about their attitudes to Islam. And, you know, it's unsurprising, really, that as... Um, more extremism is evident uh, in uh, more extremist views are evident uh, among um, among Muslims that hostility towards Muslims, suspicious attitudes towards Muslims, are um, are on the increase. And I suppose when people like you report on this phenomenon and say it's happening, you'll be accused of actually making it happen. Exactly, exactly. Um, a flawless logic on that. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but I mean, you know, 50% uh, of non-Muslims uh, who we polled with YouGov said that they thought that Islam was very or fairly incompatible with democracy. Well, there you go. Islamophobia, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, uh, um, the people who cry Islamophobia on this thing would really do well to listen to that sort of uh, sentiment. Um, uh, I mean, with over half, 55% of non-Muslims polled, saying that Islam and the separation of religion and government were in, incompatible, uh, um, and, um, and only a fifth saying that uh, Islam and separation of religion and government were compatible. That's among non-Muslims. That's the sort of thing that, 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 that Muslims and non-Muslims in the UK should be very well aware of. And when the people come along who say it's Islamophobia to talk about this or to cite it, they really should be aware that there is clearly, and our polling shows it, I think for the first time uh, to this extent, really shows that the new generation of non-Muslims in Britain are increasingly suspicious about Islam, increasingly convinced that the hardcore interpretations of Islam are the Islam, 
And, uh, you know, we, we, Muslims before attacking the messenger on this sort of thing should consider, um, you know, what, what their own, um, what their own uh, religion is, is being portrayed as in this country and try a lot harder to, um, you know, as we've always said, organize the demonstrations in favor of genuine freedom of expression, even when it's offensive to you. You know, or rally when your co-religionists are, are, are slaughtered and your holy places um, blown up by your co-religionists. Um, and do all these things because otherwise it, the, the silence is noted. Uh, by non-Muslims, and suspicions, uh, you know, only increase. So the very clear, if I may just, uh, just finish on that, the very clear descri def uh, description of this the other week when um, a, a conservative journalist called Peter Oborn, the former um, political editor of The Spectator here in London, uh, did a documentary and a, and a very poorly researched uh, piece of work it was, a poorly researched pamphlet behind it, called Muslims Under Siege, in which he claimed that Islamophobia was so rife in Britain that, 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 that uh, Muslims were effectively in Britain under siege, under siege from the press and so on. And one of the people he, he, he cited was a man in the north of England who said that um, said his house had been attacked and, uh, and, uh, and so on, and that he was a subject of um, anti-Muslim violence. I very much hope that that isn't the case and no one uh, would, um, would even remotely condone uh, violence or anything like this against somebody because of their beliefs. But this man, uh, a few days after making uh, this, after appearing on this documentary, uh, was interviewed by his local newspaper and said in it that people who commit crimes um, in Britain should be um, taken into the public square and flogged in accordance with Sharia law. Now, it, it seems to sort of be endemic of those people, as I say, the shoot the messenger people, that you can simultaneously say that it is baffling that people would be suspicious of uh, extremist interpretations of Islam, and at the same time put out extremist interpretations of Islam and, uh, and be surprised at the results. That was the Centre for Social Cohesion's director, Douglas Murray, speaking to Shire Network News' Tom Bain. Do go to the Centre's website and download the whole report in PDF format.